Good morning, friends. Welcome to Wake Up in the Word for a Monday morning. Grab a good cup of coffee and join me back in the book of Revelation, chapter number one. We're just going to talk about those verses we read on Friday as the very theme of the Bible, and we're going to even answer a little question about UFOs, believe it or not. So, hey, come join me as we get back to Revelation this morning. I want to start with an apology, though, because I had told many of you that we were going to try to cut that video for Countdown to His Coming over the weekend about the five views of Revelation, and I just have not had time. I've been to West Virginia and back on a mission trip, had another uh, exciting day and worship and some other things around our association yesterday. We've got fair ministry coming today at the Mountain State Fair. We just have been so busy. I haven't had time, so I apologize. We will get to that video eventually. But today we want to come back to Revelation chapter 1, reminding of how, reminding us of how uh, it was introduced by the Apostle John. And as he finished that salutation, I want to just pick up there in the middle of verse 5, that paragraph that uh, goes to the end of this, this great salutation that opens the book of Revelation, one that's unlike any you'll find in any other book of the Bible where he said to him who loves us and has set us free from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Another amen is coming. Watch after verse 7. Look, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him. All the tribes of the earth will mourn over him. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Now, did you pick up on the theme? The one who is to come, the one that it says, every eye shall see him. And I wanted to bring in some things from Dr. W.A. Criswell's, one of his great sermons on this salutation. He actually did two on this passage I can't give you all of that, but some of the beauty of this message is something we need to behold on this Monday morning as we start a week. He writes that this is the theme of the text of the book of Revelation. It is the heart, the substance of all its visions. In the first vision, our Lord's coming is promised to his churches. In the next vision, our Lord's coming is the grand climax of all the judgments of heaven upon this earth. In the following vision, the coming of our Lord is the catastrophic climax of the conflict between God and Satan. In the concluding vision, the coming of our Lord is the introduction to the new heaven, the new earth, and the new order of God's heavenly things. It's all about that second coming. Now, for some of you, you'd say, oh, please, preacher, do something besides the second coming. Don't you just wear this out a little bit? Uh, get back to some other passages of the Bible that will really help me in the practical matters of life because, uh, you know, there are so many other passages we could look at. Well, guess what, friends? This is a recurring theme of all of the Bible from the very beginning, from the fall. We were promised a Messiah would come. And the promise of that coming all through the Old Testament is about not just his coming as the Passover lamb, but coming to restore the earth. The lion will lay down with the lamb. They will beat their uh, swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks. Everything about the coming to bring peace and the administration of that Messiah to the planet. And by the time you get to the New Testament, oh boy, it really gets thick with second coming passages. Did you know that one in every 20 verses in the New Testament alludes to the second coming of Jesus? It's all over the place. You can't miss it. Dr. Criswell points this out to us by saying that uh, when you get to the New Testament, you can't miss it. When he even spoke, our Savior spoke in parables. He spoke about his coming again. The 19th chapter of Luke, he spoke of himself as a nobleman that went into a far country to see, receive a kingdom for himself. And he called his 10 servants, gave them uh, 10 pounds, 10 talents, said, occupy until I come. Occupy until I come. Wow, well, there's that second coming thing again. When our Lord would comfort his disciples, he said, uh, 
words that we remember, especially from John 14. He's getting ready to leave. How does he comfort them? Let not your heart be troubled. If I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. It's also in the preaching of the apostles. In 1 Corinthians 15, what does Paul say? Now this I say, brethren, flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. And behold, I'm going to show you a mystery. We'll not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. <laughs> Do I have to go on in that passage? Hey, in Philippians 3, verses 20 and 21, our citizenship is in heaven from whence we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. We're looking for Jesus to come. He's trying to tell us over and over again. Another example is the entire substance of the letters to the church at Thessalonica, of which every chapter ends with a discussion of the return of our Lord. Then in Titus 2.13, the passage that says, Looking for what? That blessed hope, the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. How about in the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 28? Unto them that look for him... Shall he, and you know who we're talking about here, Jesus, shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation? Or as Jude writes in the 14th verse of his little epistle, Behold, the Lord comes with 10,000 of his saints. Folks, this is the summary. It's the climatic theme of the glorious text of the entire Bible. Behold, he comes with clouds and every eye will see him. This is the immutable truth of God, Criswell writes, predicted by the prophets, promised by the Lord Jesus Christ, confirmed by the testimony of the angels, preached by the apostles, believed by the early Christians. It is a part of all of the creeds of the churches, the prayers and the liturgies of all the people and of all the hymn books from which we sing the songs of Zion. Take this promise out of the Christian faith and you have a mutilated fragment and a maimed relic. You see, there is no Christianity of this book apart from the exalted hope of the return of our living, reigning Lord. As he went away, so shall he come again. Surely his feet shall rest upon the summit of the Mount of Olives. If he went away for our justification, he shall return for our redemption and our ultimate full salvation. Now, Christopher goes on to preach about this considerably for some time, and it's beautiful, but do you grasp it? Everything about the entire history of the world is leading up to its ultimate climax, and that's it. We shall see him. We'll see him as he is. He's coming with the clouds. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. And when we look at what's going on in the world today, you have to put all of the events we see into that perspective. Here recently, we saw the beautiful pictures of this UFO, which means, uh, somebody asked me, do you believe in UFOs? Well, certainly, because that means it's an unidentified flying object. I don't know what it is, but of course there, those things exist. If you look in scripture, you'll find there are many times that the veil was pulled back from what's really going on all around us that is often in secret, the spiritual warfare that's going on 24-7, and human beings were able to finally see some of those things for which we have been blinded otherwise. Well, you may have seen that video of that beautiful light that descended on the Temple Mount. It descended, it landed, and then it shot straight back up into heaven with blinding speed. What do you think that is? Somebody asked me. I said, well, it is unidentified, but I know what it's not. It's not a little group of green men that floated over from planet X or Mars or somewhere else. There is a spiritual warfare that goes on constantly in our world. And whether that being was angelic or something else that's in God's plan, it's all a part of the picture. 
pointing us to where the Lord Jesus is actually returning to one day, the holy city of Jerusalem. So friends, all of these things, as we put them together and put them in perspective, have only one purpose and one plan, to point us to the ultimate return of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, God bless you. I'll get back with this subject again tomorrow, and we will see what the book of Revelation has to say. God bless you. I'll see you then.